Next up, I'm just get all my stuff together, um, is Cheryl Donye. So like many of you in the audience, I came across uh, Cheryl Donye's film as a young woman who was searching for templates, templates, blueprints, and mirrors to navigate the complex terrains of black female sexuality and desire. And at my first class ever as a professor, I had the honor to teach something called 20th century black women writers and filmmakers. I really wanted to teach a filmmakers class, and this is in 2007. Um, and I would pair a novel and a book together. And I had the opportunity to pair Cheryl's Watermelon Woman with Audre Lorde's Zammy. So as part of the queer new wave 1990s group of young film and video makers, uh, Danye not only provided new archives and stories of black queer identity, but she helped shape audiences with her distinctive narrative, which is a fresh docu-fiction hybrid that has since been dubbed Danye Mentry style. And so what's interesting about her work too is for those of you who are familiar with things like the Blair Witch Project or The Office, this kind of mockumentary, uh, Cheryl was way ahead of the curve um, in doing that, but also doing it with a really compelling political rigor and a deep commitment to uncovering voices and stories lost in the archive. So Water Wellen Woman, <coughs> which came out in 1996, as I already said, was ahead of its time. And it was awarded the Teddy at the 1996 Berlinale and was recently restored by Outfest UCLA's Legacy Project to mark the film's 20th anniversary. Critic Maura Donegan in The Atlantic describes the film as a monument to Dunye's own love of black film history but it is also a look in the ways that we uncover the history of marginalized people, people who are unable because of access or because of taboo to document their style, to themselves, document themselves. In 2007, Danye signed on to direct two episodes of Ava DuVernay's Queen Sugar for OWN TV. She's done many films um, and she's also been, or work as an episodic director to include a slate of incredible shows as The Shy, Claws, and a brilliant television series that's coming out this summer called David Makes Man. The Fosters, Love Is, Star, and Dear White People. In 2018, she signed on with Lionsgate to write and direct The Wonder of All Things, a feature film currently uh, being adapted from Jason Mott's 2014 novel of the same name. And similar to my last minute inquiry to Professor John Jackson, about Professor Johnson, I sent a very last minute inquiry to filmmaker Ava DuVernay to give me a note about <laughs> Cheryl. She's a, Cheryl Dunye is a legend in our midst, a cinematic icon, a hero to many. And I'm grateful to have had the opportunity to work with her and look forward to all that is to come. So we look forward today to hearing from Cheryl about her work, her, her work, or, or, and her talk is entitled Permission. Thank you. Um, hi, and uh, I want to thank you for allowing me to be here, um, a part of the, the, the Wright Lecture Series, and I want to thank all the organizers. I know it took a lot of people to put all the pieces together for this, so let's just give them a hand right now. Um, I entitled my lecture Permission um, because I think there's a mission that you have to have permission to be on. Um, I was born in Monrovia, Liberia. I was raised in Philadelphia. I got my MFA at Rutgers in uh, Mason Grove School of the Arts, so I'm an alum. Um, I've been directing features since 1996 and now since 2017 um, I've been directing episodic television. Um, my work really comes from the space of intersectionality, which we all know is a, a very powerful word um, that really combines what it means to be queer, a woman, and of color in film and television. I uh, generally make my own work, but interestingly enough, I've been signed on to do a lot of projects that are from producers like Ava, like Trauma Craney, um, uh, Justin Simeon, um, uh, just a ton of folks who are really changing that. Um, a lot of my work digs deep into research, um, and I, I dig deep, like I did in The Watermelon Woman, 
where I, I didn't see myself in um, uh, any black history about cinema or any queer history about cinema, so I made it up and that became The Watermelon Woman. Um, I also believe in collaboration. Um, I collaborate with every artist, writer, academic to uh, create new works, um, but really it's core to what I do. Um, and then I really believe in the commons and community um, for allowing these works to live, to touch, to um, embrace, to challenge, and to um, find new stories to tell. Um, we did just speak about the Tunerman entry and the Dunye entry, which I named, of course. Um, it blurs the subjectivity and objectivity through the work, the use of uh, docu autobiographical narrative and talking heads address. And I use that in primarily all my work or my independent work, um, but some of my work does not include include that. Um, I'm racing through this because I want to show you some work, so I'm just going to give you a background because some of you are unfamiliar with me, but I've been making a lot of shorts, um, Brother from Another Time, uh, which was a dance project, Black is Blue, which you're going to get to see some of, Mommy is Coming, which is a, a feature about uh, queer of color sexuality that I shot in Berlin, The Owls, which is a follow-up to my film The Watermelon Woman, My Baby's Daddy, my first sort of foray into big feature film filmmaking with a Miramax film, Stranger Inside, which I did with HBO, um, and uh, was about a mother-daughter reunion uh, set in a women's correctional facility. Um, it was an adaptation of uh, Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl by Harriet Jacobs, of all things, um, and The Watermelon Woman, and those are my feature works. Uh, um, my shorter works, Greetings from Africa, The Potluck and the Passion, She Don't Fade, and Janine, were works that I did while I was at Rutgers, at, in, at Mason Gross School of the Arts, um, and uh, they really are experimenting with finding that balance between my community at hand and trying to project us into the future of storytelling, um, using real people, real life incidents, um, and trying to be real funny at the same time. Um, the Watermelon Woman, 1996, is the piece that a lot of people uh, remember me by, um, is because I uh, really dug deep. Um, I was unable to afford an archive um, to use in the film, so I made one up and I collaborated with not only my mother, who, who's passed away, but a, a ton of um, artists and performers to be in those pictures, um, and Zoe Leonard and I uh, created a book of 81 photos that span her life and then they appear in the film and I find them. Um, and along the way of making the film, I end up running into people like Cheryl Clark, um, uh, uh, Sarah Shulman, Toshi Reagan, and just a ton of people again from my community as, as cultural producers who helped me find that I am the watermelon woman. And sometimes you have to make your own history. And, and I, I did. Um, Stranger Inside, My Baby's Daddy, Mommy is Coming in the Owls are the features. And I want to thank you for looking at that PowerPoint because it was hard for me to put together, but I did. <laughs> you see, it's racing ahead. Look at that. I made it spin and everything like that, too. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm not a PowerPoint person. I'm actually a storyteller with images, so that's what I'm going to get to. And I'm not a person with this type of computer. Um, so, they said I should hit escape. Okay. Hit and escape will get you to uh, where the good stuff, um, which is seeing my first short, Janine. Um, it's coming. It's coming, right? Here it comes. Um, I made Janine in uh, 1989, 1990 um, while at Rutgers. I didn't know what to do at all um, for my uh, project I, uh, at Mason Gross School of the Arts. I was a um, studying with painters and sculptors um, and performance artists and video artists, which there are no video artists anymore, but I was one. Um, and everybody, I was trying to do a variety of other art practices and somebody said, just stop, just stop right there and do what you know best and, and talk about what you know best. And um, I ended up just sitting down and telling a story um, that comes from the heart about uh, uh, a young woman that I um, 
was friends with in school, and you'll get to see it right now. So my work speaks more than I do, obviously. So. So that's where it started with the the Dune mentory, the Talking Head. Um, it was performed. I said too. It's so interesting to see this technology and how it's changed so much. Um, but that was then, and this is now. But it really is interesting to me to see the thread in my work. Um, but for Janine, it was very interesting to use my personal as political. You know, it was the moment um, where I, you know, flipped the deck and, you know, put what was inside outside um, and use my own voice, my own archive, um, my own performance. Um, and it was very, you know, stimulating. Um, it was truthful. Um, and it was a, a, a wonderful place to sort of start the conversation. And um, it's so interesting to, when I look at Janine or when I do screen Janine um, to other communities, people have their own Janine story, um, be them of any race, any color, any sexuality. And I think that's what is the interesting thread is when you sort of put your insides on the outsides, when you make your personal, the political, when you, you know, put yourself into community, um, you'll, find a space and find a connection. Um, the next piece I want to show in a way is something about um, a new community that I uh, am engaged in and now and rooted in. Um, I live in Oakland, Wakanda, okay. uh, at, which is a powerful, wonderful place. Um, but having moved there as a, an adult, um, it was very difficult to engage and find younger people you know, like myself, to, to uh, hang out with and become friends with, but I ended up befriending a very strong African-American trans male community. Um, and it was difficult to see the difference between black trans men and white trans men in Oakland and in the Bay Area. Um, we started to have a lot of conversations about these differences, um, where white trans men were having jobs, you know, were able to, you know, have agency and, you know, black trans men were being profiled as African American males and a lot of them ended up without IDs, in trouble, um, and getting the same treatment even though they have a whole different, you know, nobody was really detecting that or understanding that. So I collaborated with this community and again, community and collaboration um, and made a short film called Black is Blue uh, and I will uh, find that on here. Um. Um, hopefully we'll get to see more of that, and we will, um, because uh, I am working on the feature version of Black is Blue. Um, I'm working again with the same team, um, but I'm digging deeper into Oakland. Now, Oakland's going through probably what every community is going through right now is huge gentrification. Um, and we don't know where that's going to lead, but brown and black bodies of color and queer bodies are being pushed out. So also it comes from the supposition for me in the sense of community is um, what does the future look like for brown and black trans and queer people? Um, and we never talk about that. We really talk about our bodies in the present, you know, on the ground or, you know, in, in, in narratives like pose or, or in, in ways that are in the present. But what is sexuality? What is queer sex? What does black body look like in the future? We never, we never make it to the end of the film. So um, Black is Blue is looking at Oakland um, in 2020, maybe even a little bit further out now, um, as a place where uh, a Flint-like water crisis has happened. And um, I also wanted to look at um, uh, AI uh, and what that looks like and how that's coming in to take over a lot of the world. So I decided to separate black and blue and make black, the black that we see there, um, and make blue a black trans woman who, when she was a man, she was involved in technology that created AI, friend bots. And um, she decided to leave and transition, and it became a big battle with her partner. And that's where the film sort of begins, with Blue locked away in a mansion in West Oakland with her money and her friend bot, and Black living on the streets in the car. So my collaborator, again, Mark Schmolowitz, 
um, uh, and I are, are developing to this into a feature film with the same team um, and wonderful uh, uh, team members. Uh, so it's off. It's it's known, but we haven't really put it out there. But Laverne Cox has said that she would play Blue. So um, we're developing this now, and we hope to be shooting in the next couple years. But uh, I really believe in collaboration. Um, believe in uh, the complexities of our past and our futures um, really being something that we need to embrace because the future is now um, and the, the future has no gender, the future has nothing on us and we can make our own futures and so that's really what I'm trying to do with Black is Blue and I know my time is up and I know everybody's hungry to eat lunch so I'm going to end there. Um, and I thank you for letting me uh, present.